Welcome to Introduction to Accounting, Preparing for User's Perspective, Identifying Accounting Errors. In this video, I'm going to talk about some tips and tricks for identifying accounting errors. And errors can come into your accounting records for a number of reasons. For example, maybe we added numbers incorrectly. We subtracted numbers incorrectly. We added when we should have subtracted. We subtracted when we should have added. We forgot to record or post an entry. We recorded or posted an unnecessary entry. We debited when we should have credited. We credited when we should have debited. We added an extra zero onto a number that we entered. We left off a needed zero. Maybe we even transposed a number. Now what I'm going to do is introduce kind of a decision tree as to how you can home in on these types of errors and correct them. First you want to prepare your trial balance. Ask yourself, does the trial balance balance? If the answer is yes, you can branch over and perform some analytical procedures. That's where you compare the account balances in your trial balance to your expectations. Those expectations may have come from your budgets or they may have come from some industry information. There you might find that you forgot to record or post an entry, or you recorded or post an unnecessary entry, or you simply recorded the numbers wrong. Now if the trial balance doesn't balance, we have a few other processes that we might do to discover what caused the trial balance not to balance. For example, we can simply scan down the list of accounts and balances in the trial balance and look for errors. Sometimes the number just jumps out, it just doesn't make sense and you can just recognize it right off the bat. Other times you might simply have to re-add up the numbers in the trial balance. Just recheck your math. Maybe in your Excel sum formula you forgot to include the whole range of numbers or maybe you just left out a number or something. So simply recheck your math. There you might discover that you've added or subtracted numbers incorrectly, added when you should have subtracted, or subtracted when you should have added. Now after going through that, you may have discovered some errors and fixed those. Next question, does the trial balance balance now? If the answer is yes, you can branch over to the analytical procedures again and hopefully find any other remaining errors. Now if the answer is no, we have a few other things you can do. For example, divide the difference on the bottom of the trial balance by two. It's that out of balance number at the very bottom of your trial balance. Divide that by two. That may help you discover that you debited when you should have credited or credited when you should have debited. Another alternative is to divide the difference by nine. That can help you find a few different errors. For example, maybe you added an extra zero onto a number that was input. Or maybe you left off a needed zero. Or maybe you transposed a number. In the remaining slides, I'm going to go through different examples related to this decision tree that might help you better comprehend what I've just introduced. Here's a trial balance. I'll be using this ABC Company trial balance as the basis for all of these remaining examples, but sometimes I'm going to change the numbers in here to create errors. Here's our first example. We've just prepared a trial balance, and the question is, does the trial balance balance? And the answer is no, it doesn't, because we have $500 more credits than we do debits. What do we say we should do? We should probably scan these numbers for errors and recheck our math. If you were to do that, you might recognize that you've added or subtracted numbers incorrectly, added when you should have subtracted, or subtracted when you should have added. Now, if you were to get out your own calculator and reprove out these numbers, you'll actually realize that that negative 500 was flat out wrong. We just mathematically added the numbers up incorrectly. It really does balance. That's just an oops, you made a mistake, popped it into your calculator again, and now you've fixed it, and the trial balance does balance. Let's go on to another example. Here's another example. In this example, I've changed some of the numbers to create an error here, and if you were to add these up, you would realize that it adds up to having $500 more debits than credits. Therefore, the trial balance does not balance. How can we discover where the error is? One thing we can do is we can take this difference and divide it by two, and we get the number $250. In that case, it may be that we debited when we should have credited, and that may have caused this extra $500 of debits. For example, by scanning down here, are there any accounts that normally should be credits that may be debits? And you'll notice utilities payable is a liability. It normally should have a credit balance because it's increased on the credit side. Therefore, it appears that we debited utilities payable 250 when we should have credited it 250. Now, had this total been a credit of $500, it could have been a situation where we credited instead of debited. So by fixing that, we put in the correct credit balance of 250, and the trial balance would now balance. Let's go to another example. 
Here's another example where I've modified some of the numbers here to create an error. Let's add it up and we get an out of balance position of $5,400. That means we have $5,400 more in debits than we do in credits. So it doesn't currently balance. What can we do? We can divide the difference of $5,400 by 9 and we get the number 600. As you notice, there are no extra decimal places. 5400 is perfectly divisible by 9, and that's a key point for finding transposition errors and sliding errors. Had there been decimals, then it probably would not be a transposition or sliding error. Since it's perfectly divisible by 9, it could be a sliding error in this example. What you'd want to do is scan the numbers in this trial balance and look for a number that looks like $600 only with more or fewer zeros. When we scan up here, wow, there's $6,000. If we were to just get rid of that zero, it would look exactly like 600. And surprisingly enough, it's that one that's the mistake, and therefore prepaid rent should be $600. And we then balance by fixing that error. We would have discovered that by going back and looking at our prepaid rent ledger account. And maybe we simply took the $600 from the prepaid rent ledger account and accidentally wrote it in as 6,000. And that's how we may have made that mistake. Let's go on to another one. We check our math on the trial balance and we discover that it doesn't balance showing that we have $270 more credits than we do debits. So it does not balance. We can divide that difference of $270 by 9 and we get a credit of 30. You'll notice once again there are no extra decimal places so that means it was perfectly divisible by 9. So in this case we can scan for transposition errors such as utilities payable. What we do is we go and check our ledger accounts to see if maybe we wrote it in incorrectly. In this case, we wrote it down utilities payable as a credit of 520 when it really should be a credit of 250. And we would have recognized that based on the ledger. So by removing that transposed number and putting in the correct number, our trial balance balances. Moving on to our final one. We've determined that our trial balance does balance. But that doesn't mean that these numbers are all correct because they can be correct at the incorrect debit and credit amounts. For example, we can compare our account balances here to our expectations, our budgets, what we thought these numbers should be. And if you look at these numbers, it's possible that we may have forgotten to record or post an entry or we recorded or posted an unnecessary entry. For example, why is prepaid rent still so high at the end of the year? Did we prepay for a really long time or did we simply forget to adjust the prepaid rent to indicate the amount that we've actually used up? And rent expense is too low. We would know this based on our understanding of our own business. Our analytical procedures are dependent on our knowing our business and possibly using budgets and other things to recognize that. By getting rid of those incorrect numbers and properly adjusting prepaid rent down and rent expense up, the trial balance will still balance, but now it's balancing using the corrected, adjusted numbers that we want to put on our financial statements. Moral of the story, you can use simple math tricks and basic analytic procedures to help you quickly find errors in your accounts and enjoy your weekends. I hope this has been helpful to you. There's some great tips and tricks there that might even help you get through your homework a little bit faster. And I wish you all the best in the quiz. Aloha.